Funding for this program made possible by Kentucky Speedway, Toyota, AT&T of Kentucky, Northern Kentucky Tribune, Gateway Community and Technical College, The Klaibs Family. Thank you for your support. Among the many wonderful things about Donna Salyer's fabulous furs is that neither animal or exquisite style are sacrificed in the making of these world-renowned faux furs and accessories. And if you think these rich, luxurious coats are a fabulous creation, well, their creator is pretty fabulous too. Donna Salyer's grew up with humble beginnings in Covington, Kentucky, but what a can-do spirit she had as a little girl. She still does. And when her mother and grandmother armed her with the know-how to make her own clothes, there was simply no stopping what she would do with that talent. You know, I grew up in Covington in a poor family, and it would be a good idea if I learned how to sew so I could make my own clothes. And I was blessed to have a grandma who was a seamstress. And it was unusual back then for women even to work, but she worked as a alterations person at all the finest stores in Cincinnati. So she was really, really good. And she taught me how to sew to the extent that when I was seven years old, I was wearing in public the clothing that I had sewn. The first year I did, in 1989, I, I sold $300,000 worth of kits, and it was pretty darned exciting. That was a significant amount of money. I mean, it's not bad today, but back then, wow. And, and so my kit business is doing really well. And then I began hearing from people in Hollywood who said, I don't know how to sew, I'm sure you do, so can I get a finish coat? And, I, I say, sure, I'll turn it over to the ready to wear part department, and I would make the code overnight and send it out. Among the first celebrities to reach out to Donna was Loretta Swit, known as Hot Lips Houlihan in the series MASH. Then, actor Stephanie Powers came along, designing women and the film Sleepless in Seattle. Essentially, the stars were quite literally aligning to shine a national light on fabulous furs. There were theatrical source guides. Where where do people in the entertainment industry buy faux fur? Well, you didn't really hear about it, but they that I took out this tiny little probably fifty dollar ad in that, and that was kind of what um, catapulted us into a national market. And by the middle nineties, we were ready to wear because people. Imports were flooding the market, uh, clothing became much less expensive, and um, it, it, we're, we're now ready to wear. And so I was sewing coats as fast as I could. I was taking coats. I knew people who knew how to sew. I would drop off what they needed to make a coat. Can you make this coat by Friday? Can you make this coat by Tuesday? And, and I would, every night on my way home, I would drop off coats to everyone I knew who knew how to sew and say, can you make me a coat quick? When Fabulous Furs ramps up for its busy season, they have about 100 employees on hand. Generally, they have a core staff of about 50 people sewing and cutting. It's a seasonal cyclical business, and they do about 75% of business in November and December, spending the other 10 months preparing for that holiday explosion of business and it's all done right here in Covington. And that gives me great pride and all of us here to think that we can do things in the USA and you know give them value and to create manufacturing because not a lot of manufacturing is happening in the garment industry in this country. So I, I think that is outstanding. Technology has played a big role in the quality of the faux fur available for their creations and the resources are global. It becomes more beautiful Beautiful every year because it's technology and it's international technology. It's Japanese fiber. They're the masters of making fiber. And it feels like the Koreans are the masters of using that fiber. And then we find the best fur hooks in the world come from Germany. And we're always out there looking for the best because we want, we want to be the best in the world. And I think the touch has been the last piece 
of the puzzle in creating a beautiful faux fur. That it can be beautiful. Ooh, but how does it feel? Does it feel like an animal? <gasps> yes, it does. I'm not sure if this is animal or if this is faux. It's faux. And so that has been the challenge. And I, we're there. We're there. And it's great. And so I think people are more aware of the cruelty behind animal fur and saying, oh my goodness, now that I can see this on the internet and see what goes on, you think, oh no, who could do this? But also the technology has stayed you know, parallel with that. So I think those two things uh, have, have really come together. The quality, design, and luxury, and basic good conscience behind the making of fabulous furs continues to appeal to celebrities. In fact, one celebrity in particular declared a fabulous fur as her favorite. We were Oprah's favorite thing. I thought that was a big deal. It was a very big deal. When Oprah sanctions something, it's the Oprah effect. And I mean, we were lucky enough that she fell in love with us years ago and became a customer and you know they featured us in the magazine i think since about 2006 but she has a magazine called o magazine and she's always on the cover every issue and uh, in the De december 2014 she wore her favorite thing our coat and it was on everything every national tv show you know all the entertainment channels and all that kind of stuff but it was just awesome and awesome things continue to happen for fabulous furs and what's particularly fabulous is that Donna Sayer shows as much enthusiasm and appreciation for every new wonderful thing that happens with her fabulous furs, as if it were the first great thing that happened. I think only in America could things like this happen, that you can have a global reach, but here we are in Covington, and it's the best community ever to live and raise your family, but you have the capability to spread out and become as large as you want.